Now, before we get started, you want to make sure you're using a newer version of Reaper. As some features have changed, and if you're using an older version, you're not going to have this feature. So in this case, you want to be using Reaper 7.19 or newer. But before I show you this new feature, let's review how snapping works in Reaper. If I move this item, it doesn't snap to the grid. But if I turn snapping on over here, now it does. It snaps exactly on the grid, nowhere in between, at least by default. If we right click up here, we could change that by turning snap to grid at any distance off. Now it refers to this setting right here. I have it set to 15 pixels, but of course you could change it. And with this turned off, if we move this item, it doesn't snap to the grid unless we get close enough to the grid. In this case, 15 pixels, or whatever you set that setting to. So we drag it over to here. It snaps to that grid as we get closer to the grid. Let's turn that option back on for now, as we'll come back to it in a bit. So there may be situations where you want to have a vertical line to show up on the cursor. And we could do that in the preferences. Control P on the PC or Command Comma on the Mac. And that opens up our preferences. And we go down here to Appearance. Right over here, we can display the vertical line at the mouse position. This is off by default, but if we turn this on, we now get this line that goes from the top of our screen to the bottom throughout the entire project. And we can use this to line things up very easily. Like for example, let's say we want to split this item. We want it to line up with the other tracks in our project. We could see it with this vertical line and then split it right from here. And it splits our items exactly at that point. So it makes it easier to line things up. But well, you need to see the exact point you want to work with, with all the tracks at once. And there's some preferences that go with this. As you can see, it doesn't snap right now. If we turn snapping on, it doesn't snap either. If we want that, we go back to our preferences and change it from do not snap indicator line to respect the toolbar snap button. If we turn this on, now if snapping is turned on up here, that vertical line snaps no matter what, right on the grid. And again, it respects that setting that I showed you before in the snap grid settings. So if we turn this off and we set the snap distance to whatever setting you want, it's going to respect that setting. So as you see, it doesn't snap between the grid, but if we get closer, it does. To each grid line in the project. So it gives us more flexibility for snapping right on the grid. For our items, and now for this vertical line. But there's other settings we could use. We could use ignore snap if shift key is held. And now it's still going to snap to our grid unless we hold down the shift key. Hold it down. Now it doesn't snap to our grid no matter what. And we could also choose to use control on the PC or command on the Mac instead. Now the shift key doesn't matter. It's still going to snap. Hold the control on the PC, command on the Mac. Now it ignores that snapping. Let go and it snaps again. Or we could choose both options. Either shift or control on the PC or command on the Mac will work. Hold down shift, doesn't snap. Hold down control on the PC, command on the Mac, it doesn't snap. But if we let go, it does snap. So there's a bunch of options we could use with this. But by default, it's not going to snap to the grid. Now, you probably don't want this on all the time, as it could get annoying. So you probably want to turn it on when you need it and off when you don't. And we could do that with an action. Let's go to Actions, Show Action List, type into the filter, Mouse Indicator. And there's an option right here that's going to do that. It's going to toggle that mouse position line on and off. So let's give it a keyboard shortcut right from here. Choose any keyboard shortcut you want. And now 
if we hit that keyboard shortcut, we see that line. Hit it again, it's hidden. We could also do this with a toolbar button. Right click up here, go to customize toolbar, go to the bottom, hit add, and choose that same action. Double click it, make sure it's at the bottom. I'm going to add a separator and we'll add a button for this. Right click over here. And I'm going to choose this one right here. And it's going to look like this. Hit OK. Now it shows up over here. And if we hit that keyboard shortcut, we see a line and this lights up. Hit it again. The line goes away and this doesn't light up. But instead of using the keyboard shortcut, we can just click it over here. And with it turned on, we now see our vertical line. Turn it off right here and we don't. So it's a bit more useful just to turn it on and off when we need it. Using the keyboard shortcut or using the toolbar button. Turn it on when we want it. Turn it off when we don't. Just a great way of seeing where the cursor is placed on a vertical line from track to track. I want to line things up right here or here. We could do that with this line. Or turn it off with the keyboard shortcut or using this toolbar button. So that's pretty much it. That's the mouse position line in Reaper 7. I hope you learned something. Hope you could use it. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.